back viewers of Tobago Channel 5 and our listeners on Pulse 89.5. It's 7.40. So if you had to get somewhere for 8 o'clock and you're not on the road yet, we do have traffic in Tobago, you know, Brother B. Yes. And Mr. Martin yes. George. Our... And, and, and it's something that actually upsets me all the time. I really think we need to do something about it. When people come to Tobago, mm -hmm. they don't want to see traffic. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we, we need to find some alternative to that. I have always felt so because it takes away from the nice idyllic from feeling. Be like come to be 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 right? Yes, you know, to stuck in yes. bumper to bumper yes. traffic. You're like, what? So what is this? Yeah. Okay. You don't know what is this. Okay. Sometimes I'm sitting here and I'm like, when did we get here? Yes, when yes, did we yes, get yes, here? Yeah, 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 but, you know, we can sit here and we can talk about how lovely <laughs> and so on Tobago is, but we do have overarching problems yes. in Trinidad and, and in, Tobago. in Tobago. And one of those problems we're here to talk about with you this morning is the judicial system, one which mm. you're intimately knowledgeable <laughs> and involved with. Yes. Yes? Yes, yes, yes? We've recently had a bill. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get your opinion of it, first of all. All right, okay. Well, there are two aspects of the current legislation that um, is being debated in the Parliament. Firstly, there's the one to remove jury trials, mm -hmm. to put an end to jury trials. So, mm -hmm. in other words, you're saying that look, the only system, mm -hmm. and then the other one is to abolish preliminary inquiries. All right, so the idea is that they're trying to tackle it from both ends of the system. So in other words, they're trying to tackle it from the what is actually happening at the High Court trial. So they're saying remove the jury, so you have a judge only deciding criminal matters. And they're saying at the front end, at the preliminary inquiry stage, they're saying that that time-consuming process ought to be eliminated. Now, I'll tell you, both bills are very noble in the intent. As said Pamela Elder. Yes, mm -hmm. right? They are noble in intent, and I mean, I guess it represents an effort to try to ease the backlog and the clogs in the system. Unfortunately, let's look at the um, preliminary inquiry aspect first. Okay. When you consider... What they're saying, that, look, they want to remove preliminary inquiries totally, right? So abolish preliminary inquiries. You remember what the DPP said before the Joint Select Committee? He said he has over 800 murder cases backed up waiting for trial in the High Court. Now, that's just murder. That's just murder. So I think of all the other types like of offenses. This. When you have <laughs> malicious wounding, you'd have shooting fraud, you'd have larceny, shooting other. with intent, all the other things. So that means basically you have thousands of cases already backed up waiting for okay. trial at the high court level. Right. So, no, but let me, let me just tell you the point. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when you say you remove preliminary inquiries... What that does, it doesn't really speed up the judicial system, which is really the issue here. The issue is that you want to get the judicial system moving faster. All you do is take, for instance, and I'll use the example of our digestive system. All right? So it's like you have a blockage in your small intestine. Mm -hmm. So you say, look, all right, let's bypass the small intestine and push everything down into the big <laughs> right. intestine. Yeah, but all you've done, you just move the clog further down right. into the system. But this whole system is still clogged. And at the end of the day, you are still full of it. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> let me, let me. Shh. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me, let me, let me stay there for a second. And let's. All right, so we got the analogy and we got the point. But mm -hmm. I want to just go back to and ask this simple question, as silly as it may sound. What is preliminary investigation or inquiries? Preliminary inquiries. 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 Right. What is it? Okay. Just right. for the listening public. Right. So we have the Preliminary Inquiry Act mm -hmm. in the laws yes. of Trinidad and yes. Tobago. The purpose of it is to determine whether a prima facie case has been made out in a criminal uh -huh. matter. Good. The reason being... So we define what the crime is or, or what it means that what we are pursuing. Well, what, what happens? It gives the magistrate, uh -huh. the magistrate who sits, the inquiry and magistrate, it gives them an opportunity to sift the evidence that the prosecution has. Good. Measure it against the standards for that offense. So in other words, there are certain ingredients you must prove in every offense. Right. You must prove the mental intention, the mens rea. Right. You must prove the actus rea. Good. 
Okay, so mm -hmm. in other words, if you're saying that, look, somebody stabbed somebody, then you must prove that, look, you had an intention Tent to stab to somebody. Mm -hmm. It's not that you were standing with the knife and well. they run past and mm -hmm. they got cut. Right, mm -hmm. right. Right, because in that case, you never had right. any intention. Good. But right. if you intended to do so, so in other words, you got the knife, you looked for the person and you decided you are going to stab them, then that satisfies the men's mm -hmm. rear. And then you must have the actus reus to show that, look, yes, that stab did, did cause action. a wound. Mm -hmm. You know, right. so therefore, if you have some like malicious wound, then you go to the definition of what is a right. wound. Let us look. No, it's very important to get this, Mr. George. Now, in the absence of that, let me say we pass the esophagus and we reach quite down by the intestines, <laughs> to use your analogy. <laughs> That means, therefore, then that preliminary inquiry the is really the substance right, of, the of, of the case. Thank you. Now, I want you to explain as an attorney the disadvantage. Well, there's no disadvantage. Obviously, the case will become almost um, take it from there because, I mean, I could use my no, tool. Well, right. but, yeah, but not just that. There's uh, another uh, advantage to the whole thing uh, that nobody's mentioning. Many times, and in fact, it happens every day in courts throughout Trinidad and Tobago, at the preliminary inquiry stage, the magistrate will make a determination and say, hey, listen, your evidence has not met the threshold for a prima facie case, matter dismissed. So in other Absolutely. words, you get rid so of we, cases right there. So Mr. George, so don't even have to reach to the high court. So, so this fella, uh, let's say, this fella who had committed this inquiry. offense, he can walk. At the magistrate's court level? And he is as guilty as sin. Well, in, no, terms of, no. in terms of, no, <laughs> no in terms of the act of whatever, no, 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 no uh, because if the magistrate has discharged him, then he's free. Uh, this means free. that he is not yeah. proven yeah, guilty. Exactly, well, that's what I mean. All right, um, so, uh, it, so that's the difference. So, in other words, uh -huh. when you talk about uh, removing clogs from the system, the preliminary inquiry does serve that purpose too, because uh -huh. those that the magistrate discharges and says, look, you have, um, the state has not made out a prima facie case against you. Mm. That's the end of it. My, my. They are out of the system. So therefore, mm. so now when you remove that, what is expected? All those matters will still go straight to high to court high for a court. full so jury trial, now, whether they've met the minimum standard of evidence or not. Mm. So, so therefore you are really right. just moving the club further. From so that, to understand, and I want, I want viewers to really grasp this, that now instead of having this preliminary inquiry stage being handled by the first court. Mm -hmm. The magistrate's court. The yes. first magistrate's court. Mm -hmm. the, the magistrate's court. Mm -hmm. It's now going to be handled, but because it has to be handled, That's the right. sifting of the, the the information still All has to be done. Yes. The gathering of the evidence, the, 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 the um, proving that they do in fact mm. have a case. Yes. All of those things still has to be done. That's so right. now you're saying it's going to be done at the high court level immediately. And also, if the bill is passed, it's also going to be done by. Well, the second bill deals with the judge only trial. Which is by a the judge. Whole so what are kind of these judges going to go crazy? It, well, not just that. The point <laughs> is, when you think of that aspect of it, if you want to um, get to that, we, we have to consider that you're talking about, in many cases, the fundamental constitutional rights of persons. Because of you therefore have the right to incarcerate somebody, mm. sentence somebody. So therefore, what you have now is you are investing in one person. That yeah, well, I wanted to I wanted to deal with that holistically. You know? we, I just didn't want to jump straight from the, the preliminary. The preliminary right. Because so we, we don't we, mix we them up. Let me, let me just finish with that. Because I think, and then we come to sure. the judge alone. Yeah? Yes. And of course, Ramesh Maharaj made a pronouncement on that and so on. We'll yes. get your take on that. But let's just go to the preliminary inv uh, uh, inquiry. inquiry. Now, Mr. Judge, you just outlined that a fella guilty of whatever crime and he can walk. No, no, no. I know. No, no, all right, no, all right. Let's, all right. Let's not be, no, because we haven't reached the guilty stage. But however, he can walk. He's been charged. He's been charged. Right. But he can walk based on the fact that this does give or it allows for that to happen. Give if, all right, let's put it this way. You are saying that it doesn't do well for the justice system, given that someone can walk based on that alone. Just no, eventually. I'm not saying it doesn't no. do well. I'm saying it's actually a very useful aspect yes. of it, because I'll tell you. Uh -huh. let, me, let me give you an example. I've seen many matters where, say, for instance, um, okay, let's use malicious wounding as right. an example, okay. where you have to prove certain ingredients for a wound. There's a, there's a legal definition of what is wounding, right. right? There must be a breaking of the skin, 
All right. So in other words, a, a slight bruising will not satisfy the right. So therefore, you must have a medical report which can show that, look, yes, there was an incision. And usually the doctors will describe the size of the incision, right. whether it's three centimeters long, two centimeters deep, that kind of thing. So then now, with that, the magistrate mm -hmm. can say, yes, medically mm -hmm. and legally, mm -hmm. I have the evidence that right. there was a wound. Right. Now, let me, I, and I want you to understand this. You mm -hmm. may have mm -hmm. someone who is the virtual complainant standing in court raising up their hand and saying look you could see the wound this is where <laughs> I was stabbed right. good if that you don't have the medical <laughs> evidence to satisfy the legal definition of a wound the court does not take what this person is showing them mm. because you must have the medical okay. evidence right. so mm. in a scenario where mm. say for instance either that medical is unavailable it's lost or, and I've seen matters dismissed for simple things, such as the doctor has to certify what category they registered in in the medical board, whether you are on the provisional register or whether you are on the full register, mm -hmm. right? Now, that is important. I've seen doctors who did not specify either and therefore, as a result, the medical was held to be defective okay. because on the medical re must report specify. form, it says you must specify. Right. Or sometimes the doctor may not have signed it, okay. you know, or the date of examination may be totally inconsistent with hmm. the facts that are led hmm. and the medical is thrown out. Without that medical, you cannot establish the wound. Right. So therefore, at that stage... <laughs> At the preliminary inquiry, you, before it even reaches the yes, high court, yes. the magistrate will say, look, look you have not met Great. the requirements of the law right. in terms of proving the ingredients of the offense. Okay. End of matter. All right. Let's go now to judge alone. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to speak to the advantages and disadvantages of having judge alone. Do you agree? Well, I shouldn't ask you to agree. No, no, I, I can give my view I'll because I'm I totally against okay. it. All right. Well, I'm give totally us, against okay. it. <laughs> well, tell us I, why. I, 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 I don't think that it is proper, and particularly in a society such as ours, to have a judge as the sole arbiter of both the facts and the law. Absolutely. Under our current system, the judge is the sole arbiter of the law. So right. you have a criminal trial going on, and say, for instance, using that same example of the malicious wounding mm. and the lack of proof. Mm. Now, the judge, being the sole arbiter of the law, if that scenario occurs at the high court in a criminal trial, the judge will direct the jury and say, listen, this is a legal requirement. The medical evidence has not been proven. Therefore, I direct you to return a not guilty verdict hmm. because the judge is in sole control of the law. Now, the jury may not have known that because they will see, well, look, the person is showing us a wound, what, you know, in, mm. we would right, say. But would the point say. is, there's a legal definition. So because the jury doesn't know that, the judge is the sole arbiter, so he can direct them there. Of course, that's his realm. Great. Mm. Now, the jury mm. are the ones who determine the facts. Right. So, in other words, if the medical evidence was there, but then for whatever reason, the jury may have felt, well, look, this man is not the person who stabbed the right. individual okay. because they believe either an alibi or whatever, then that's their right. sole area to determine, not the judge. So All in right. other words, the jury, they determine the facts, the judge, the judge determines, determines the, law. the law. And he has Beautiful. the power to direct them on legal concepts, which they may not know, but he may say, look, because, because you know, this hasn't been satisfied legally. Because you know, ignorance legally, of the law is um, it's no not excuse, an excuse. Right. Right. He may right. say, because this hasn't been satisfied legally, mm -hmm. I'm directing you that you must return a not right. guilty verdict. This bill is attempting to speed up or to get rid of the backlog. And this is why... This is brought to the house. We agree? That, but here's the thing. The intent is Wait, to... Don't, don't, no, but I, I want to touch on that because mm -hmm. I'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. I have seen no statistical data, no empirical evidence to show that a jury trial is what causes a delay. The fact that there's a jury does not cause any great delay in the system. So, therefore, my point is, if you are advancing this as your reason for trying to speed up the judicial system, show me that the Impressive. jury are the cause that of the, the delays. Takes two Most times, it's the attorneys are yeah. the causes but, of the delays, because either they want an adjournment, uh, they have two or three other matters in different courts, so yeah. they're saying, well, look, I can't deal with this one, I have to go to the next court, and therefore the matters adjourned, 
or they, somebody may be sick, they may be out of the country, whatever, they, they, they may not be ready for the matter, they may not have been retained, they may now say, well, look, I have now been retained, so therefore I need to get instruction. So Mr. therefore, George. I am not at all convinced that juries are the causes all right. of delays. So you admitted just now that the attorneys uh, contribute to the delays, of yes? Of course, of course. All right, but well, thanks for admitting that. Eh? It's a fact. Yeah, it's yeah, well, we're going to put that on the news. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let, let me just go a little further, though. But it's not news. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, exactly. Not, it's not news. Anyway, that. anyway. Um, the fact that we have a backlog. Now, I, I mean, you said there are no empirical evidence to prove that Judge Alone uh, can speed up the process. Right. We have, there are evidence of Judge Alone operating with civil matters in the United States. The judge no, no, Julie, in, our, in, in uh, civil uh, matters uh, in Trinidad and Tobago, judges alone. Yes, good. not in criminal all right, cases. But I'm saying, all right, how do we, because really, I mean, I'm sure that you two as an attorney hope that the judicial system or wish that the judicial system would get some speed in, some, uh, some speed in treating with matters and, mm -hmm. and to get them done yeah. with swift justice and, 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 and so on. Just, mm -hmm. Justice the ladies, justice the night. Yes. Now, what do you propose, given that you're saying that this is not working, this would not work in the Trinidad and Tobago scenario, criminal matters need a jury, is that because on the basis that it has been the way we judici we, we, um, we, we deal with our criminal law in this country? Or um, what is the basis? What, do you, what is the basis for your argument saying that um, you're not in agreement? Okay, this? because, as I said, firstly, you deal with the fundamental rights, for instance, the right to liberty, freedom of movement, that kind of thing. In other words, you can impose a sentence right. and say, look, you are incarcerated. So I'm saying that we ought not to repose that power of both determinant of fact and, and law, law within and one person. individual. And the next thing is, there's sometimes a disconnect. And I'll tell you this. I'll give you a simple example. Sometimes there's a disconnect between judges who may be ensconced in their ivory towers hmm. and the reality of what goes mm. on on the ground. Okay. I can tell you this. Eh? Okay. Let, let, me, let me explain. Right. I, we had a matter some years ago where there was a young man from Beetham who was badly beaten by the police. Now, the thing is, he was a thug and a bandit. <laughs> but notwithstanding that, the beating was not justified right. because, in other words, he's already in the station, and it's while he was in the station, because they know of his history, mm -hmm. the police officers took the opportunity to, 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 yes, well, right. you know, to give him a little, yes, a little right. warming up. Yeah. <laughs> now, the judge who was sitting on the... So we brought a civil matter, a constitutional motion. The judge who was sitting on this matter, he said... Um, that he did not believe that police officers would do this type of thing to citizens mm -hmm. because his experience, whenever he has to visit a police station for mm -hmm. whatever reason, but what does he expect? You know, He's um, they treat him with such deference right. and such, you know, and right. he he, mm. he cannot believe. That. Mm. That and, and, mm. and, and, and I told him, I said, I said, my lord, that's exactly why this evidence is important. Right. Because this is the evidence of people who are on the ground. They know exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. So therefore, right. you need to listen to what they are saying. Right. So judge the thing is, can marble? you imagine in a criminal trial, a judge with that mindset mm -hmm. sitting, then basically there's almost a tendency for him to automatically tend to believe what the police say, hmm. regardless of what, hmm. because of his own experiences. Right. So that's why it's they say you are judged by a jury of your peers. So they take people from the street. They pull juries from ordinary people right. who come from a range of experiences. Right. So therefore, you bring to bear that wide spectrum of knowledge that people will, at all levels in society, because remember your jury pool is, is all the, the civil yes. servants, yes. everybody. Yes. Yes. So therefore, you are saying, look, you are the people who know what is going on out there. You can relate to and listen. Mm -hmm. You could judge because you know sometimes there may be people who may fabricate stories against the police. So therefore, you bring that to bear too. Mm -hmm. And then you also know from your things you may have seen or heard that the police can actually be brutalizing people. So therefore, they can now bring that sense of balance. But if you have someone who just comes with a one-dimensional perspective, yeah. I think it skews it too much oh in one God. direction. We gotta, okay. <laughs> well, we, we'll take a break at I this mean, time. I mean, Mr. George, will you be able to stay on with us for a little longer? Sure, please. Lovely. Sure. Okay, good, Viewers good. and yes. listeners, stay tuned. You do not want hmm. to turn your dials <laughs> anywhere <laughs> because this is really important yes. stuff for us. Yeah. We'll see you after the break in just a few minutes after we pay these bills. See you after.
Welcome back, viewers. And for those of you just joining us, we are on set with Attorney at Law, Martin George, and we are discussing the judiciary system. Mm -hmm. That's a tongue twister for me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Judiciary, oh, kind of. judiciary system. Say, Say three times. Yeah. Judiciary. Yeah. All right. Okay. And we were talking before the break, Mr. George, about the intricacies with the new bill, the mm -hmm. new proposed bill, I should mm -hmm. say, and how and the effects it can possibly have on the judicial system. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. This is why I, this is why I dropped out of law school. I couldn't say the thing. But you were you were you were making the point about the importance of a jury. You want to continue from that point? Yes. The thing is, okay, like for instance, a, a, a simple thing, like mm -hmm. an example. If you are addressing a jury, say for instance, if a man has been charged with stealing five avocados, you as an attorney, you're not going to stand in front of a jury and say, well, the man um, has been accused of stealing avocados. You will say, but it's five zaboka. You mm -hmm. know, so right. you, 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 are, you have that ability mm -hmm. to relate to mm -hmm. the man in the street, the ordinary exactly. person, at the same way mm -hmm. that your client would have been circumstanced. Mm -hmm. You can't do that to a judge, <laughs> you know? Right. They, they, they would not be impressed, hmm. amused, or even moved by anything such as that, you mm -hmm. know? Because as far as they're concerned, they are looking at it from, from the, the legal standpoint. You. Right. you see, so therefore, they... You, and that's because of our training, if you understand me. Our training is such that, look, you analyze it legally mm. before you even analyze it factually. So right. in other words, if it doesn't meet huh. the threshold in right, law, right. Yeah. you're not even listening anything beyond that. Okay. And that's part of the problem. Now, I have seen some very interesting circumstances, say, for instance, the Vindra Naipaul Kulman matter, right? Where after so much time, so many years, remember, eventually the um, the jury dis they found um, they, I think they were hung on um, some of the yes. verdicts and stuff like that. And as a result, I think a judicial officer made a comment that you know this was you know an example of how juries can bring in a wrong verdict. Uh -huh. Now okay. here's the thing: there's a danger with saying something like that because. You cannot say that that's a wrong verdict because <laughs> it's the jury's Who's sole exactly. preserve and discretion yeah, yeah. as to what they decide. Mm -hmm. And how they may see it sometimes is totally different from how a judicial officer may see it. And I think that's part of the difference in terms of saying you are going to remove the jury. It removes, I think, an important ingredient in that the perspective of the man in the street is never the same as a perspective from someone who has been trained legally and only looks at it hmm. from a legal yeah, perspective. Okay. And I think that okay. it is going to be a disservice to the public right. if you remove the jury no. system and rob the ordinary citizens of that opportunity. Because, say, for instance, a man may not even have an attorney, but he might be able to stand up and talk to the jury and address them on his terms. Right. And they may... Go with what he says. Okay. You can't do that to a judge. The judge will say, oh, no. this man is just wasting my time. Right. No. The B, law is clear and, you know, he's guilty. Right. Now, Brother B is going to shift the conversation. Not but yet. Just before, I'm staying there. <laughs> okay, but just before we go, I want to ask you, do you think the bill will be passed? Uh, the thing is, here's the problem. I am of the view that because it has the potential to impact upon our fundamental rights and freedoms as uh -huh. enshrined in the Constitution, that it ought not to be a simple majority. Now, the thing is, I know the Attorney General has suggested that, look, if necessary, mm -hmm. he can try and go with a simple majority. To my mind, because of all the fewer that it is generating, yeah. I think it's not wise to go that route, if you understand me. You know, while you may try to force it through, it may not be the wisest option because then it may now be open to somebody filing a constitutional motion, um, you know, to you know challenge it, and then now it's and then it has to be stayed whole bill thing while of really that motion is being heard in court, and you can't implement it because hmm. the court now has to determine the oh. constitutionality of the mm. bill. So I, I would think that really and truly the course of prudence would be 
either you get the three-fifths majority, which would mean getting support from the opposition, and I think they've already signaled their lack of support for it. So therefore, you may need to go back to the drawing board, okay. go to either a joint select um, session, yes. whereby you can thresh out Where the differences, like iron it out. Kind That's of right, so that okay. you get some consensuality moving forward. All right, um, let's okay. deal with the press conference held by, and of course, we're staying with that, uh, Ramesh Raj Maraj, your colleague. Uh, he would have pointed to the whole question of solutions. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I think if we have to give any applause, is for what he's offering or suggesting. He spoke to the whole question of detection rate, and he gave you the stats as far as murders and so on. Mm -hmm. about 7 to 6 percent mm -hmm. in detection rates. Yeah. Uh, he pointed to, to get more detection or to find or bring people to justice. Is, uh, he suggested the DNA testing and forensic investigation, mm -hmm. um, bringing in of hiring or, or introducing this whole question of undercover cops and all the necessaries that goes into detecting, because half of the murders are committed. Uh, I could give you 2016, 462 half. murders mm -hmm. in 2016. The detection rate was seven, 70. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I want you to speak to Ramesh Miraj. And his suggestion, the DNA testing, the forensic investigation, undercover cops. Take it from there. No, I would certainly agree with almost everything he has said. And, you know, the thing is, um, there are those, of course, in Trinidad and Tobago, persons always have their supporters and their detractors. Right. And, you know, uh, Mr. Maraj is not without his detractors. But I'll tell you something. I have been able to analyze and study, if you look at his history, if you think back to the heyday of the first incarnation of the UNC government in power under Mr. Pandey as Prime Minister, the one person who ultimately brought down that government for its corruption was... was right, right. Yes, good, okay, right, right. So right. We have to remember that. So in other words, in that instance, he chose country over party. All right, well, let's... Right. Whatever his motivation good. might have been. No, no. So, yes. therefore, there is sometimes some value and merit in, in things that right. he says. Well, let's stay with the merit and the value. Yes. Obviously, he's saying that we've got to go beyond party lines. This is not a political right. issue. And he said, listen... Um, however, the Prime Minister would have procured, let me use um, a judicial term, uh, <laughs> procured the services of, I call it, the nation's hitman. Yeah. Uh, because he would have been irresponsible for the Dolce de murder, I mean, uh, hanging. Yeah. Um, there's desperate, these are desperate times. The Prime Minister is under pressure, and yeah. he would have gone to Ramesh Laraj Marat. Yeah. From a political perspective, do you think that would cause some falling out in the PNM over, um, or maybe the Attorney General may feel off stage. Your position on all of that and... and no, I, I don't think that um, the no. current Attorney General is feeling off stage at all. And I don't think he's of that nature where he um, would even be worried about mm -hmm. something like that. Because I think he said publicly that mm -hmm. he has no difficulty with getting the assistance in order to get the job done mm -hmm. in that it's regard. Fun. I've seen persons try to belittle and mm -hmm. demean him and saying that, well, this means that he can't do the job. I, I don't think it's that at all. Mm -hmm. The point is, we've had a circumstance where this individual, Mr. Ramesh Lawrence Maraj, mm -hmm. as Attorney General, mm -hmm. was able to successfully implement the death penalty, and this government has expressed its view that they wish to do so. Yes. So I see absolutely no Good. difficulty right. in crossing so party lines or whatever to lovely. get the help from wherever. And yeah, let me tell you, done. this is something we need to start doing in Tobago. Absolutely. Tobago needs Bring in to the understand. Yes. After the election is over mm. and you are now in office and running Tobago's mm. affairs, you need to go across party lines and get expertise from wherever it may be found, mm. regardless of what people's political uh, affiliation or non-affiliation may okay. be. Right, let me ask you, and staying with the death penalty, the fact that uh, the nation's hitman was hired to be... <laughs> That's I'll your term, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyway. I'm I'm right, right. Okay, fine. But, but, but uh, Mr. George, let me... Let me. So noted. Now, so noted. Obviously, obviously, so noted as a judge. Um, obviously, there needs, the government needs to do something. Yes. And they have gone to the jugular by re right. of having Ramesh Maraj to bring or to be able to bear the death penalty. Your views on that. Uh, we've heard from the Archbishop of uh, Port of Spain. He's retiring and so on. Yes. And he's saying that the death penalty will not... Uh, bring or instill the fear of it will not do anything to stop the murders in this country. Your thoughts on that? Do you think it's a deterrent? Do you think it will help in any way, given this desperate move by the Prime well, Minister? The thing is, as I've always said, if we take it to its basest and simplest level, the death penalty at least deters one person, the person you've hung. 
he is not going out and murder anybody again. again so you no stopped him. one person, if nothing else. Right. So don't say it's not a deterrent. It has deterred him. Right. He right. ain't going anywhere to <laughs> hang anybody, to right. right. kill anybody. No Good. Right. Right. Else, and right? if you look also statistically, mm -hmm. after the Dolce de Gang was hung in Trinidad and Tobago, there was a significant drop in the number Thank of you. murders okay. that occurred. Also, there's a very um, you know, spectacular case that was tried in the courts in Trinidad um, some years ago, where part of the evidence was that the man, before killing the woman, said, listen, um, you forget they don't hang people again okay. in Trinidad. Good. And he proceeded to kill her. So right. therefore, it is clear that in some ways and in some quarters, it can be a deterrent, and the point is, it's the law of the land, and I say let's implement it so long as it remains Wow. The law. If we <laughs> reach to a position where we have changed the law and it's no longer we, the law of the land. All right. Mr. George, you know what, I wanna, I wanna, well, just let me stay with this, please. <laughs> I want to go, and I want to thank you, sir, for saying that, because people uh, with your influence, given that you're an attorney at law, a very successful mm -hmm. one at that, uh, to hear you say that gives some comfort to the citizens who are afraid that the law fraternity would say because we're protecting our little purse. Now, I just mm -hmm. want to go to a point that is really a sore point. You admitted earlier mm -hmm. that uh, given uh, the busy, or some of the attorneys may be busy and it contributes to delaying court matters that can be resolved mm -hmm. in court. However, this case of uh, appealing for five years and after that, you cannot be hanged. We have spoken to that this morning. That has mm -hmm. been, and we spoke to that the last time you mm -hmm. were here. Yeah. Um, and they advised by the attorney to appeal for five years. Boy, they can't touch you, but I'm making my little money mm -hmm. on the side. Now, right. I, I want to ask, how can we, given that, you have that position that you took, can we bring to maybe the parliament, an amendment, whatever, to have these people who would have killed mercilessly and are appealing and are using the system to stay alive. How can we maybe make an amendment? I don't know if there is in law how that can be dealt with so that these people will come to justice. Well, the thing is, okay, we have to remember the Pratt & Morgan decision, which was mm -hmm. a decision of the Privy Council, is a judicial precedent. Now, the way judicial precedent goes, you have a pecking order. High Court, Court of Appeal, Privy Council. Right. So, in other words, right. the oh, okay. Court of Appeal can overrule the High Court. The Privy Council can overrule the Court of Appeal. Hmm. And the only reason, and I want people to understand this, the only reason why the Privy Council can't be overruled is because there isn't another court above it. But the Privy Council itself has been shown to make contrary okay. and contradictory judgments. Hmm. There are two cases. The Ray Polymus and the wagon mound. These are two cases which involved the ships, and both of them were tried before the Privy Council and heard and determined. And the Privy Council in London came to two totally contradictory decisions in those two cases, which just simply exemplifies the point. You remember those cases, the Ray Polymus and the wagon mound? It shows that the Privy Council itself can be wrong because the two decisions, were, they cannot stand side by side because they are totally contradictory. Right. So of the course. only reason why the Privy Council is always right is because there's nobody but above them, above them, them to, to overrule. Right. Okay. Mr. George, I want to thank you so much. But just, just, just before we go on, I sure. don't know if you can do this in 30 seconds. Sure. Is there a way? Through case management, which we saw as one of the, the areas highlighted by Mr. Maraj as, mm -hmm. as, as, as a possible solution, we have to have better case management, yes. right? With this five-year stay, mm -hmm. with all of these things to go through, is there something that we can now implement to force attorneys to take this process through, to take the cases through quicker? All right, or well, is it just that we have to now have better relationships with all okay, external right. I parties. can tell you, mm -hmm. we have the criminal proceedings rules, which are due to be implemented next month, all right? And those are designed to do what the civil proceedings rules 1998 have done for the civil jurisdiction. Now, years ago, it would take sometimes 10, 12 years for a case mm -hmm. in the civil jurisdiction to be tried in the high court. 
Now it's a lot faster because they've introduced a case management system. So they are now doing the same thing for the criminal jurisdiction. These are things that will speed up the system. Okay. So in other words, there's light at the end of the okay. tunnel. It's not all doom and gloom, and it's not all negative. So therefore, there are things that can be done. There are other things that I have suggested repeatedly. Have an attorney as a research assistant to every judge and every magistrate in every okay. court. So that's his job. He's assigned to do that. That's right. And that will help and you speed up. Okay. Not just that. You should have your laptop there. You should have internet. So therefore, you as the attorney, while, an, uh, while somebody's making a submission, they might call a case, you could check up on the case because listen, sometimes attorneys stand up and cite wrong cases and cases <laughs> right, that have no right, relevance right. to the material. Yes. But the thing is, the judge doesn't have the opportunity because so, the judge has right. to listen to so the submission. Okay, okay. But if he, the judge has an attorney there full time so as a research assistant mm -hmm. in court, mm -hmm. they could be checking and they could just mm -hmm. pass a note and say, Judge, listen, that case that was overruled by the court of appeal. My. Look, this next decision. So, so it's a matter of you, experience in terms of the, the uh, just what you're speaking to, to have personnel to treat with to keep Listen, check and balances as to how so the process is going. Many things oh my we goodness! Can do as practical, okay. fundamental the, things yeah. to speed up the judicial system that you don't even need to go to legislation oh to kill. Okay. Right. So many practical things, and I think we need to start with that. In other words, let me tell you, and the greatest way to effect change is start with the things that you can change, Beautiful. rather than dreaming about the things you, you can't, can't change. change. Excellent Absolutely. wisdom, wisdom. Well said. <laughs> well said. Always a pleasure, <laughs> and we hope to see. You. We want you to. Well, you are a regular contributor to Rise and Shine. So we hope to have you soon again sure, so we can continue. Sure, sure. Our pleasure. Well said. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. George. And thank you, viewers, for staying with us. Up next, we open the phone lines where we can get some feedback from you, Tobago. It's all about you. See you after the break.